Hi there! So I thought I would do a little video with my Pivo pod. Um, I originally bought this about six months ago. Um, I bought it for work and I thought, oh, I might be able to use it with the horse too. Um, and I used it once um, on the yard and then twice at two different lessons and found it utterly useless. So it then just went back into the office. Um, I've recently seen a lot of people commenting, if you hear noise in the background, sorry, that's my dogs. They're both trying to sit on my lap and it's quite difficult for them both to get up here. Um, yes, so um, I've seen a lot of people recently saying, oh, they've either bought one or they're using it. And I was like, OK, maybe they've done some updates. So let's get it back out and see how it works. So this is me getting my pivo pod out and about and seeing if the updates have improved it. So I've set it up on a jump wing. Um, I've used, um, I've got movable tripod arm things for work. So I just took one of them down the yard with me. I've attached it to a jump wing and I've put it slightly off center in my very informal arena. Um, as you can see, first of all, I just moved around and checked it was following me. Um, I then did go back. My horse is pretty good. I can just leave him. Um, I just checked that he was in shot. Um, and then I've got on. And at the moment, it's following quite well. Um, I wanted to make it as relatively true to life and as practical as it would be. So I do understand that they say try not to have too much shadow, wear bright clothing or white clothing if possible, stuff like that, so that it really focuses on you. If you're like me, I will ride in the morning or in the evening. So I would say 80% of the time the sun is going to be somewhere casting some kind of shadow. Um, it is not practical for me to ride in the middle of the day when the sun's nice and high in the sky and there's no shadows in the field. Um, as you can see, it kind of lost me there. So I know when I go down the sea end, it kind of loses track of me. So I just walked in front of it to catch it again. Um, the thing about wearing white or bright colours, I did put on his Lemire um, Sorbet saddle pad, which is quite bright. Um, but I'm not going to be putting on my white dressage square to school him every day. And I don't own white clothes. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to buy it. So I wanted to basically test this um, to be practical for any rider. I want to be able to hook it up. I want to be able to set it up and I want to be able to get riding and forget about it. So I started off at the beginning. I'm doing my warm up. Um, I'm focusing more on the pivo than my riding. I'm the quick disclaimer i am not a natural rider everything i do with riding i have to consciously think about um i was competition groomed for about ooh, many years i can't remember eight maybe more i can't remember but i didn't ride i was a groom i cared for the horses um so riding is not something that comes very naturally to me so there is a lot wrong with my position blah 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 please no comments nothing like that i you know, I train with good people and they're working on me. Um, so what I tend to do in my warm ups is we do a lot of serpentine circles, lots of changes of rain. Um, this is as much for him to get him getting nice and flexible on both reins. It's also very good for me so I don't get stuck on one rein. But as you can see, once again down the sea end, it lost me. So what it did is it kind of turned straight round to the darkest area of the field. I had then noticed it had lost me, so um, I come back in a minute and I try and catch its attention, as it were. On the whole, um, do you see <laughs> that? I found very frustrating. The amount of times I try and walk by it to go, hey, catch me, and it would just go away. So I'm going to walk past again. Catch me. It's got me. Yeah. Um, so on the whole, the way I would sum up using my Pivo pod would be, it is like asking an easily distracted toddler to film for you. <laughs> it's not as bad as it was. When I first used it, it would literally just spin around and stare at a wall. I couldn't get it to focus on me at all. Um, I really struggled to use it at first. Um, so, yep, um, it did better this time. But on the whole, it was a little frustrating to work with. Um, during my warm-up, I was trying to really focus on keeping it on me so I did find myself looking over to it a lot making sure it was following me when it started spinning around if it had lost me I would then make a point of going right we've got a circle that way or we've got to go past it or something like that that is not in my eyes practical um 
you'll see there it kind of got a bit confused if you've got to keep it in the middle of the school which as it's only got a 20 meter range you kind of have to so you kind of put it i put it just off center at x the problem with that is if you do any change of reins on the long diagonal down the center line anything like that if you get too close to it it does often lose you so it managed to stick with me that time but later on as i was schooling it kind of went oh god she's gone i can't find her and again it started spinning around and it just it couldn't cope So I'm going to try and keep this video about 20 minutes um, and I'm going to try and make sure I keep in kind of the good, the bad and the ugly of our schooling. So when I came up into trot, I have to say actually, trot and canter is not an issue for Pivo. It does not struggle to keep up with you when you pick up the pace. Um, that I was really impressed with because that's where I'd had problems with it in the past. As soon as I would go to um, canter, it would just go, ah. Now my boy, he we are still working a lot on our canter. So our first canters as well tend to be a bit kind of like shoot off quite quickly or something like that. It did really well keeping up with us. Um, the only thing I found myself doing a lot, as you can see, is a lot of the time I found myself on a circle round the pivo. Now when I school, I don't like to stick constantly on a circle or constantly thinking I've got to be going around that point or doing this or that I like to be doing lots of serpentines lots of changes of rain lots of things like that having a jump wing in the middle of your school is awkward it's inconvenient and in the back of my head I'm always thinking oh, if I go more than 20 meters away from this thing it will lose me so you know I think at the moment it's it's still at an all right stage it's okay but you see there it saw a bit of shadow and it just, it lost me. It was tracking me and then just went, oh God, I, I can't figure out where she is. It spins round and goes straight past me. I do think it needs to slow down when it's spinning like this because it just went full 360. If it had been going a little slower, it should have been able to hook onto me. So I've then noticed it's missed me. So I've gone, right, okay, we'll just trot past it. And it did pick me up quite quickly. Obviously, if you go into shadow and things like that, it will lose you quite easily. But again, a lot of us are going to be riding first thing in the morning, last thing in the evening. There's going to be shadows. There's going to be, you know, it's going to happen. Um, so, yeah, on the whole, I'd say 70% of the time it managed to keep up with me. I've just cut out a bit of our working in there um, just to show you how it coped with Canter. I had set up the Bevo so that it would um, keep me always in the center of the frame. I am a little to the right, but on the whole, you know, it keeps up when you're cantering. Um, as I said, please don't pay much attention. We're really working on our canter transitions. Um, like many cobs, walk and trot we're fine with. Canter is something, it's quite a work in progress for us. Uh, but yeah, I was quite impressed with how the Pivo really did keep up with... Um, our canter work on the whole i tend to work him a lot in canter on a circle anyway we tend to do it down either end of the school um just because when you get on a straight line with my boy he um rushes and stuff like that so keeping him on a circle at this point wasn't the end of the world however there will be you know in the coming weeks i, I will want to canter along the long side and i do think this would lose me because again as soon as i got down I don't know why, but for some reason C end, it would lose me rather than A end. You know, I'll get down to C end and it will lose me. And I want to be focused more on my horse's schooling than whether I'm being watched by my device. At the end of the day, I want something. It should be working for me. I shouldn't be working for it. So I want this device to be following me, to know its job. I don't want to have to keep looking around going, oh, it's looking over there again. I better trot past it kind of thing. I want to be able to just focus on me and my horse and then watch back um, afterwards.
So after I'd worked in, I then decided to have a little walk around the field, cool them off, uh, or have a little breather, and then we went back to working. But this time I focused on schooling and I was really focused on just me and my horse and not worried about the Pivo. I would say it went down to following about 50 to 60 percent it did struggle the minute i went right i'm going to forget there's a jump wing in the middle middle of the arena i'm just going to score my horse it did struggle um again you know for what i mean it was 90 quid so if you look at the price of a lot of these um devices that are designed to follow you they are in the six seven hundred pounds so you know for 90 quid you can't really complain but it still just has a lot of work to go before I think it is um, something that you would say, yeah, as a rider, you need this. Because for me, the point of a device like this is when I'm schooling or when I'm riding at home, obviously I can't see what I'm doing. I don't have mirrors. I don't have an arena. I'm just in a field. So while I'm riding, I sometimes do certain things and I think to myself, oh, that felt really good. That felt like I was hitting the mark there so I like to then look back at my um, filmed session and see and I'll remember where it was and then I'll see ah yes that looked good so you can kind of look back and say yup he was what I was feeling was correct it, it, it would just be very frustrating um, there were a few good bits I got this day and I was like oh, I can't wait to see that on video of course it's the few bits that the pivo had just wandered off and had missed it um so yeah I think with a few updates um and if they target it a little more at kind of the riding community um they could honestly make a lot of money from us because for something for 90 100 quid um a lot of us are more willing to spend that than the six seven hundred quid okay so I will stop wanging on soon. I'll try and make this, as I said, just a 20 minute video. Um, I then tried a few days later, um, I rode him in the evening. So once again, oh, the sun's going to be in a place where there's loads of shadows. Um, so I'm gonna, just going to let this video play a bit so you can get an idea of how well the Pivo managed to follow me. It was very high winds this day. So this will also give you an idea of how strong the Pivo is when it is blowing a hoolie. So already I'm actually quite impressed with how well it locked onto me first of all as you can see because of where the sun is I mean I'm a dark blob in a dark blob um, <laughs> there's a lot of dark and a lot of black it did well keeping up I do think in high winds it's going to affect it as well because it is being pushed obviously your your phone is almost like a little sail up there so it is getting pushed and, and hammered about a bit so on the whole i was actually quite impressed with how well it kept up with me um i once again i i came in and i for the first like few minutes i was just i kind of walked around the arena reminded myself where it would keep following me where it would keep in top like on top of me and stuff and then i did pretty much just get into schooling and i tried to ignore it as much as possible again because i want to get into the habit of i'll put the pivo on if it catches me great if it doesn't it doesn't what you're gonna do um so i just wanted to see how well it coped in the wind and again with the sun in a slightly different direction um, position So after a little walking around, I then started tackling my poles. Um, I put them out in a pattern I'd seen on 
oh god you know what? i keep forgetting i'm on a facebook group and i keep forgetting the name of it so i will link it below because they do loads of poll work loads of good work so many fabulous ideas um i should have put the polls the other side so that the sun was behind the poles um but i didn't i didn't even think of it but at the end of the day i was going to be using the whole arena so wherever i put it there was going to be some shadow and stuff now this is where the pivo struggled when i went straight towards that big shadow that big clump of foliage all the brambles and stuff every time it lost me so i think that needs to be um, in the back of your mind so if there is any shadow and stuff in your arena in your schooling area always make sure not to ride in a straight line towards it because then the pivo will quite easily lose you because you've just become one with the other shadow it tried to catch me there it lost me i, I honestly think in all fairness i think the wind just pushed it back um and then it lost me um so yeah i'm just going to leave it playing a bit um just so you can get an idea but that to me that's so frustrating i walked straight past it and it just went no and it turned away um this is what happened on a few of my lessons and again is it gonna catch me yeah it's gonna catch me it's got me we're fine um yeah so when you've lost the pivot i definitely think make sure you get it round so that any shadows and stuff are behind it you're in really good light to then kind of catch it again So again there, I went in a straight line towards the um, big shadowy area, so it did lose me. So this is a perfect example of what I was saying earlier. I trotted past it on a circle and I just got that little bit too close. So it then just got a bit confused and lost me. So then I'm trotting round, hoping it will catch me. It's spinning off the other way, unfortunately. So here I come round again, and it's caught me. There we go. It's a bit of a, like for me, I was a bit frustrated there because I was like, I feel like I'm focusing a little more on the PV than I am on the pole work I'm supposed to be doing. But <laughs> we got there. <laughs> But again, I'm going to come past it here and it just gets a bit confused and a bit lost. Um, I don't know whether it then caught onto that person cycling past in the white. It would surprise me if it had because they are quite a distance away. I didn't feel I was getting too close to it, to be honest, but it did just lose me. That is frustrating because it wasn't in shadow. It's it's in bright sunshine there. I've then come past again and it's got me. So I'm a little confused as to why it lost me. But you know what? It, it did. It's not the end of the world. But now I'm doing a little work on the grid work on a circle and this time it's decided to keep with me. So it is a bit hit and miss when you get close to it. Whether I was just an inch different or it really had got me and it just carried on following. But you know sometimes it will follow you around, sometimes it just gets a bit confused and loses you. Um, that was the first time I'd gone in a straight line towards the shadow and it kept um, up with me. So yeah, it is just a bit hit and miss, like when you go past there, unfortunately it did lose me. So 
So again, here I'm going to show you some canter work. You know what? It does keep up quite well with canter work. I think I would like it if it kept me more central rather than to the the front of the screen. So it's always kind of like a little behind you in canter, just because when I then come down towards the poles at times, it did miss me a bit. Obviously, I cantered straight past it there. I didn't expect it to keep up with me. I passed it within about four foot. So I'm not surprised that it lost me there at all. I have to say at hit this point i am actually really impressed it's keeping with me you can tell by the jerkiness just how strong the wind is getting if i turn if i say about now that's the sea over there <laughs> we are right on the coast so when we have windy days we have windy days so i was actually really impressed with this it is really jerky but it is really sticking with me so it's quite strong up against like the strong winds so that that did impress me with it So after I've finished all of that, I'm now just kind of cooling off and I just wanted to use this um, little pole work setup in just another way. Again, practicing a little bit for my Lautrec. Um, I kind of wanted to call the Pivet's Bluff because I'm right in front of all that shadow. I'm not moving very fast um, and I really wanted to see how well it tracked me. And again, you know what? I was actually quite impressed with it i think my expectations have always been quite low with pivo especially with my first um uses of it so i was really impressed with this i really did like put it to the test here because i kept going into that really shadowy area i'm on a black horse it's you know i wear dark clothes it did really well following us um and yeah i was quite impressed with that so my final thoughts you know what? For the money, I think you very much get what you pay for with a lot of technology, especially things like this. Um, there's lots of other things on the market. As I said, there are things that are like six or seven hundred pounds. Um, and they're the kind of things that um, will automatically zoom in. You have to put um, kind of like beacons around the arena so that it triangulates and it really follows you. And you then wear like um, a tab that it then zones in on and follows you know so six seven hundred quid that's what you're kind of looking at you can then get really simple devices um which are like this it basically it works on a recognition there's it's not following anything it's just seeing there's a big shape moving i'll follow it when it first came out i was very underwhelmed i have to say six months down the line I'm almost at a point where I would recommend it. You know what, I think another six months and they will have improved this a lot for riders. I think they've realised that there is a market there um, and that, you know, we love to watch ourselves ride our ponies. Um, so I do think if you've got the money, it, it's it's an, it's an all right investment. I think at the moment it's still a bit buggy. They really need to work, it's the range. For me, you need a minimum of 30 metres. Um, I genuinely don't think 20 metres is enough to comfortably be able to school your horse. Like, if you, most people have um, a 60 by 20. Um, and I, 20 by 40? 20 by 40. I'm getting mad there. Sorry. Um, and just when you go to the end of the arena, that is when it just keeps losing you. And that's just so frustrating. So if they could just improve it to 25, 30 metres, I think it would then become a really really useful bit of equipment for riders um, and then with any luck you could start leaving it at um, B or at E. I don't mind leaving it at the side of the arena but at the moment how it's set up having to leave it in the centre of the arena is, is a bit of an inconvenience. Um, so yeah I mean on the whole I would give it currently um, I would say seven and a half to eight out of ten. It's not quite there yet but I think it will be there with time anyway i hope you found this useful um i've rambled on for 25 minutes sorry i tried to keep it to 20 minutes um if you've got any questions comments requests um if you'd like me to do a video on my setup or anything like that please just pop that in the in the comments below thank you so much for tuning in and i hope to see you again soon bye